There we go. We've got a new kid on the NASDAQ trading block. USA Rare Earth ringing the opening bell today. Began trading at $10.23 a share. It is now at $12.64. That's a gain of 17 and a quarter percent. Nice move there. USA Rare Earth aims to be a leading supplier of something called sintered neo magnets and other rare earth materials. China currently manufactures 90% of the global supply of those crucial magnets. President Trump has pushed to bring rare earth manufacturing and refining to the U.S. because these rare elements and rare earths are used in everything from smartphones to computers, electric vehicles, and defense hardware, including military fighter jets. They're even in some pharmaceuticals. With the U.S. and China lobbing tariff bombs back and forth, our next guest is building facilities here in the USA in hopes of playing a crucial role in curbing America's dependence on China. Joining us now, USA Rare Earth CEO Joshua Ballard. Rare Earth's miner went public today via SPAC deal with Inflection Point Acquisition, so a reverse merger. Uh, this is your first final hour of trade. Yeah. Uh, first, congratulations. Uh, what do you think of the stock action here? I think it's great, and I hope it, it means that America is noticing how important these rare earths are for this country. So you are soup to nuts. This isn't just, oh, we're going to dig up the deposits that we find. You are ready or working to be ready to dig up deposits in Texas, then move them to be refined in Colorado, or, and then to Oklahoma, where you will manufacture the actual magnets. Let's talk about Texas first. Mm -hmm. When do you think you'll start being able to break ground and start finding these elements? So in Texas, we've been working on the processing technology for the last few years. What people have to realize is it doesn't exist in America today for the most part. And so we're bringing that back. Our engineers have been working hard the last couple of years. And we're moving pretty quickly now to get that out in order to get those minerals out and create the ore we need to make the magnets. What specific elements are in Texas that you've identified? And specifically in Texas, it's a really unique deposit because often when you hear about rare earths, you hear about light rare earths, which are actually very abundant. Uh, we have what's called heavy rare earths, which are actually rare. So it's rare earths such as dysprosium and terbium, which are used in these high performance magnets that are in all these technologies you're describing that we use every day. It's, it's really the linchpin of modern technology today. That's what we have in our deposit. In addition to critical metals like gallium, which was banned by China a few months ago, uh, and hafnium, zirconium, lithium, and some of the other tech metals. So we need these elements. We absolutely need them, yeah. Dysprosium and terbium, are, they're probably in the high 90s controlled by China today. We let, me, let me stick with actual mining for these elements first. Digging into the ground for anything uh, is a serious business in the United States. You need permits. There's been a lot of red tape for mining or re refining, for that matter, anything. Do you expect that the administration is going to loosen some of those regulations so that you can forge ahead with this? Yeah, we do. Uh, also, thankfully, our actual deposits on state land in Texas, and so we're more driven by state law in Texas, and Texas is an incredibly business-friendly state, as you know. They you know? sure are. Yeah. Okay, let's move it to Colorado, where you will be doing exactly what once you d pull out these rare earth minerals. Yeah, so in Colorado, we're actually working on the processing technology. So when you think about broadly mine to metal to magnet, right, you pull out the minerals out of the rock, then you have to process it into the actual ore that you then make into metals that you make the magnets. So our engineering teams in Colorado are working on the processing technology, which I mentioned earlier doesn't exist today in the U.S. for the most part, to separate out these individual minerals so we can actually make the metals ultimately to make the magnets that we need. And to Oklahoma, this is and where you start making these magnets. Can you explain right. exactly what a neo-magnet is to our viewers? Yeah, a neo-magnet is a permanent magnet that you can imagine it as you're basically, it's the technology that translates electricity into motion. Right, so where you use gas power in a car before, you put in an EV and it's translating that motion to the drive of a car, whether it's in your phone and a speaker of a speaker that makes the vibrations and a speaker that makes sound, it's translating that all into motion, is what it literally does. Part of the issue with China is that we were able to dig up some of these minerals, but we couldn't refine them. All the refining opportunities were in China. It is yeah. a very dirty business, not great for the environment. How sure. are you gonna keep it cleaner? Well, China is using a brute force to get out these minerals. There's ways we can look, use a lot of acids in mining. There's ways you can recycle those acids throughout the process in order to reduce it. And I come from, my prior company was, did a lot of filtration of the water. There's also industrial filtration techniques you can use to cleanse the water and recycle the water. We're going to be looking at all these things to make sure we do this as clean as possible in Texas. You know, the president has put something at the top of his to-do list, and that is to cut a deal with Ukraine for 
so-called rare metals like yeah. lithium, which is not exactly that rare, okay. but also in Greenland, there are some developments as well. How close are you, how far ahead are you to those projects? Yeah, the difference when we talk about Ukraine and Greenland is they're a couple decades away. These haven't been fully explored. Ukraine was last looked, the deposits in the 80s under the USSR. It's a long time before we can get to those, and they may or may not have strong rare earths. We're near term, we're right here, and we're right here at home in America, right? We need to be looking inward as much as we're looking outward for this. Since we started talking, Rare, U.S. rare earth is up 11 percent for a gain at the moment of 29, per, 29 or 30 percent. You have a very motivated investor audience watching right now. Give me a sense of when all three will be ready to go specifically. Yeah. So magnets is near term. This is over the next year. We'll be commissioning our plant in the first part of next year. We're already commissioning a lab, an innovations lab, to begin to work with customers very closely. Uh, literally this month, and so this is a very near-term event. Uh, the mine is over the next couple of years. Uh, we're working, finalizing the processing technology in order to get through our feasibility studies to begin to build the mine. It's great to see you. Yeah, it's good it's to It's really you. interesting to watch uh, the action here because people understand now more than ever what a rare earth or a rare element right. is. And for those of you who don't know, we can put up the, the so-called periodic chart of some of these. And, and you had mentioned that uh, when you talk about some of these names, it's very interesting to see what's involved here. And in the end, important for defense. Critical. Really critical for medical technology yes. devices and pharmaceuticals. Mm. Like what? Like cancer drugs, I understand. Yeah, cancer drugs. It's used. It, it's amazing where you find these rare earths. It's literally across the board and critical to our national defense. So giving this away to China, we've abandoned this industry uh, to China. We need to bring it back for the sake of our own country and the defense. Well, good luck and thank you for bringing it back. Thank you. We're excited to. Okay. We, we love this business. Appreciate right. it. Josh Ballard, thank you.